Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a look at the mathematical definition of a Fourier transform. In the previous video, we already saw that we can take a single pulse as an input of a amplitude versus time function, an input to a circuit or an input to a radar, for example, and we can convert that into a amplitude versus frequency function that allows us to analyze the frequency of the input signal. That's called the Fourier transform. Remember, the Fourier transform works well when we have single pulses, non-periodic functions, with other words. And here's the mathematical definition of what it really means. When we take the Fourier transform of a function in the time domain that is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function, f of t right here, times e to the minus j omega t dt. Now, this looks a lot like the complex form of the Fourier series. And in a few more videos, we'll show you the relationship between the complex form of the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. And that's how you know that there's a lot of similarity there. We can also take the inverse Fourier transform to get the function back. We start with a function that is in the frequency domain. We take the inverse Fourier transform, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function in the frequency domain times e to the j omega t dt. Remember, j is equal to the square root of negative 1. So we like to use j as being equal to the square root of negative 1. And of course, in algebra, you tend to see i used for that particular value. But here, in electronic circuitry, they like to use j. Now, to understand this a little bit more, here's the actual equation that describes the Fourier transform of a single pulse that is centered about the central axis here, the vertical axis. If we do a Fourier transform of that, we get this. We get a function which is equal to the amplitude a times tau. Notice a is the amplitude of the time function right here. We multiply it times the pulse width. That becomes the amplitude at the center here of the frequency function. We multiply that times the sine of omega tau over 2. Omega can be any frequency now. Remember that we don't have discrete frequencies like we did in the Fourier series. We have a frequency function times tau, which is the width of the pulse input, divided by 2, divided by omega tau over 2. We'll show you how we derive that using this mathematical definition. Now, it turns out this is the sync function, and this is what a sync function looks like. Now, let's say that tau, the width here, is equal to 2, like 2 seconds. That means that the sine of omega 2 over 2, so I plug in 2 for here, the sine of omega 2 over 2 is equal to the sine of omega, and we know that the sine of omega equals 0, when therefore omega equals pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so forth. So now you can see the relationship between these points right here where the function crosses the horizontal axis. Again, this is only true, of course, for this particular function. But you can see here that when you plug in 1 over 2 for tau, because that's the pulse width right here. The twos cancel out. You get pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so forth. And so now you can see what this really means. The frequency at which the function, which is the Fourier transform of the single pulse here, the, the value of that function equals 0 at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and of course minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi. That would be the frequencies at which that happens. So, of course, that would be 2 pi radians per second. That would be the frequency of the particular point where the function goes through the horizontal axis. So that's what I mean by slowly beginning to understand what a Fourier transform is. We'll take it one little piece at a time, explain what it means, see what happens when you begin to change the inputs, and then after a few more videos, you'll begin to get a good feel of what we're dealing with and what the Fourier transform is. That's how we do that. 